Hello everyone, we're Moss Charmley. Today we're going to talk about Linux for artists. Are you a digital artist who have been thinking about using Linux? Then this video might be just right for you. We plan to demystify Linux for people who might find it very confusing or overwhelming. Having a dependable operating system and computer that just works is something important to have. Because when you're a digital artist, you have so much more you have to put your energy into. First thing when looking at Linux is to answer the question, is it professional? Are these dependable programs? Can you rely on them? The answer is yes. It sounds general and overly simplistic, but it is true. There are more professional artists that are mainstream that use Linux and Linux programs. And we want to explore with you those programs and demystify what Linux really is. If you start to dive into the world of Linux, there are so many terms and phrases that get dropped on you, like kernel and package manager and packages and GNU or Windows systems. Uh, and should you use X11 or Wayland? And all this is completely confusing because none of this has anything to do with being a digital artist. So we intended to mystify what Linux is if you are willing to hear us out, you might think of Linux as a viable operating system for you to use as a digital artist, or at least something new to explore. All right, now let's talk about what is Linux. Mm -hmm. Simply put, Linux is an operating system. You may be familiar with other operating systems, like Apple's is Mac OS, and then there's Windows computers, and there's Android, which Android is also Linux based. And then there's Linux. <laughs> so an operating system, we we'll describe what an operating system is, is derived of applications and something called the kernel or the core and the hardware. That includes all the computer innards and its accessories. They're all separate pieces that work together. The operating system includes the user. That's you, Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Linux is also open source. And what is open source? Open source just means that it is a user maintained and operated. It is free to use with the public. Open source is public domain. What makes using Linux feel intimidating has to do with the different distros or distributions. A Linux distro is basically a tailored OS that includes the Linux kernel with custom software and a software manager. If we were to use an analogy, the term Linux distro is like using the word ice cream. There are so many different types of ice creams and unique flavors and ingredients out there. Um, you've got dairy free and mint chip and cookies and cream, and there's even ice cream that has bacon in it. <laughs> so Linux distros have that in common. There are so many different flavors and ingredients that developers have made distros tailored to their personal preferences. Distros have gotten even more unique and now are being made for specific uses, like distros that focus on gaming and music production. There is an abundance of Linux distro flavors, which then could add to the confusion because then you wonder which one is right for me. In, in our world of only chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, or Mac, Windows, or Android, it's a shock to your system that you have so much choice with Linux. As a digital artist, you want a distro that will work with your hardware, and that may include a specific GPU, a drawing tablet, or a pen display. But don't fret, because some distros will have all the drivers pre-installed in their kernel, and they just work. Wacom has drivers pre-installed, XP Pen has drivers for Linux, and Huion has drivers for Linux that are out of beta. So what about the drivers for your GPU? Yeah. If it's AMD or NVIDIA, some distros have that driver ready to go when you install. Just make sure when you are making the install disk to choose the GPU specific installer. One may be for AMD and the other may be for NVIDIA. So just double check. If you are wondering what Linux distros we would suggest, here goes. Uh, if you prefer something that looks more like Windows, uh, we would recommend Kubuntu or Fedora KDE. If you prefer something that looks similar to Mac, 
well then we would recommend Pop! OS or even Nobara Gnome Edition. Um, that's a relatively new um, distro, but it's actually really, really good, and it's picking up steam with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. To simplify, uh, the only thing that makes a Linux distro Linux is the kernel. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been using that term, but here we're going to explain a little bit more. So the developers of a specific distro, like Kubuntu or Pop! OS, will use the Linux kernel and surround it with customized software that will give it a different look and feel that a specific user would prefer. Now we're going to explain some of the weird terms you may come across. So, yeah. What the heck is the Linux kernel? <laughs> what is what that? What is that thing? Yeah. A Linux kernel is the core. It is one of four things that make up the operating system. Those four things are the hardware, the software, the kernel, and last but not least, the user. The kernel is the orchestra conductor. The kernel tells the hardware and the software to work together for the user. Okay, let's talk about packages and package managers. Because what are those things? <laughs> right? They're obviously part of the OS. Well, this one's simple. Packages are apps, and a package manager is more like an application depot or an app store. And that's where you get your applications and how those apps are installed on your OS. Oh, uh, what about X11 and Wayland, right? Like, what are those things? <laughs> <laughs> they are both windowing systems, or also called a display server. It's basically the manager of the graphical user interface, or what you see on the monitor, and how you interact with everything in that operating system. That includes the pointer, the icons, even the menus. Uh, that also includes how you can customize all of that, all of those separate parts as well. X11 has been the standard for a very long time, but just recently, Linux distros are going to be using Wayland as their display server. This reason is is basically, you know, Wayland is a little bit more efficient, you know, in how it's actually throughput is for your display. So. Yeah, anyways, it's it's a big change, but it's really nothing to worry about. Um, if you want to use X11 and everything's working well, that'll be great. Yeah. But Wayland is definitely something that is going to be the future of Linux distro yeah. window management. Wayland has a simpler throughput for window management. Yeah, yeah. it's basically easier to, easier to deal with. Yeah. So, yeah. Now that you know <laughs> and figured it all out, you are now a Linuxer. Mm. <laughs> Congratulations. <Woo! laughs> so why should artists use Linux? Here's some of the benefits. We use programs that are professional and have all of the necessary tools to do what we want and need to create our art with. They are free to use. We have more control over how our art is being used too, mm -hmm. and we're using them. Yeah. So Linux makes our computers also last a bit longer. This is pretty cool because it, it gives older computers new life as yeah. well. That's yeah. really neat. It's very important because your, your hardware will last a lot longer. You know, yeah. That's something that is definitely beneficial. You know? Right? It saves yeah. it from being e-waste. You get like five more years out of some of these yeah, computers. Definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah. So it's incredible. How long. Another thing, Linux isn't bloated. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> not that it has a lot of gas. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> there, not less lactose intolerant. No. There, <laughs> there's a computer term called bloatware, which is when your computer has a lot of unnecessary preloaded software. And that, code. Yes, that makes your computer run slowly. So bloatware slows down your system and takes up space on your hard drive. Linux is really awesome because it doesn't have the bloatware, which makes it run more efficiently on your hardware. Mm -hmm. It's less resource intensive, in turn creating a more efficient machine. Mm -hmm. So what about programs that we you know, would recommend for artists? Yes. Yes. Uh, usually people might think that these programs are not professional. They are. But they are. <laughs> and here are reasons also uh, why some may think, you know, they're not professional. So, um, how do I describe it? Like, they've been given, you know, people at schools have been given a specific program to learn, you know, in your school, as mm -hmm. an art class. Uh, teachers have been accustomed to these programs. and. They get a lot more marketing also. These, these programs get a, little, a lot more marketing. And it becomes the industry standard being passed down in schools as, as the one program to learn and because everybody else knows how to use it. Um, 
So it becomes that becomes that the standard. That for standard, the, the yes. Professional software. Yes. <laughs> and it's yeah. okay, right? I mean, that's not negative. That's no, just it's not. Kind of People become reality. used to to it over time mm-hmm. by by becoming, you know. Just so used. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's so highly used. It's so highly taught. So it becomes that stuff. Yeah, and so. and people stick with it because they don't really want to learn a new a new program. It can become overwhelming to learn, you know, a new program. So yeah. um, people stick with what they're comfortable with and what they know, which is not a negative thing. No, no. So, also another reason, uh, Linux programs are free, and I think, and that might make people weary. Or they may not have the kind of marketing budget that other programs have, which diminishes their exposure to the public. So mm-hmm. most people don't know about it. It's mm-hmm. not shown. You're not seeing commercials, you know, for these programs, you know, on TV or, you know, social media as much. Yeah, right. So these are some programs that are free and open source that we recommend. They're really awesome. So we're going to we're gonna share it with you. So first off is Krita is a great digital painting program we use this program the most Mm -hmm. (laughs) you can digitally paint create comics and even animate on it Mm -hmm. then there's blender blender is the 3d program to use it's also free so anybody can use it there are also really cool things within it um like grease pencil it can do a lot you can edit movies with that thing yeah it's 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 an amazing and it's one of those programs that's got it all yeah, it really does. So in, in many ways. So, yeah. But it's becoming that standard nowadays. Yeah. Definitely in many workflows for animation. So, Oh, and GIMP. GIMP is a free editing and digital painting software. Yeah, photo editing. Yeah. Oh, did I say that? Photo editing. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's also, it, that one's considered an alternative to Photoshop. It is. So, you know, give it a try. You could do a lot with GIMP. Yeah, there is. New one just came out. So there's a lot of new features and it's got a new, like, coat of paint. You Fancy. Know, on its, you know, <laughs> user interface. It's gooey. So, there we go. Then there's also Inkscape, which is a free vectors graphics editor. So, it's considered an alternative to Adobe Illustrator. Mm-hmm. So, that's a good one, too. Then there's uh, Scribus. I think it's scri- scribus, scribus or Scribus. Scri- <laughs> we never say it out loud much yeah, <laughs> in no. that way. Um, I think it's Scribe, because like scribing. Yes. Like you're the scribe. I think so, too. <laughs> I think. But I say Scribus. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. do. We pronounce things our own way. <laughs> yeah, we understand. So, however you pronounce it, uh, it's still good. <laughs> it's still good. So, Scribus or Scribus is a free and open source desktop publishing software, which could be an alternative to Adobe InDesign. Yeah, it's a great alternative. Yeah. So we recommend. There's so many. Just to let you know, there's so many more open source software out there for artists mm-hmm. and people to use. So many. Uh, these are just a few. Many alternatives yeah. to what is considered more mainstream. Yeah. It really is a Pandora's box of amazing stuff. Yeah, it really you know? is. Yeah, it really is. And you can export files to oh, yeah. everything. It doesn't matter. You so. can be on multiple operating systems, different ones, and they'll they'll talk to each other. Yeah. It's amazing, some of those apps. You know, I mean, what they even have, like, you know, AirDrop is KDE Connect. Yeah. That's an alternative, and that's an open source Linux version of AirDrop that'll yeah. work on all your systems. So, super cool. Anyways, Linux, there's a lot of things going on. <laughs> so, yeah. There's so many artists out there who use Linux. So, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll leave a link in the description to show that there's so many artists yeah. that use it. Check them out. So, check that out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's so much to talk about with Linux and open source. We gave a brief overview about Linux, and it didn't include the creator of Linux and its history. Mm-hmm. His name is Linus. Yeah. And actually, it should be pronounced. It's kind of like Linux because that's you know? his name. Yeah, it's like Ghibli and Ghibli, but it's really Ghibli, and this is Linux. <laughs> <laughs> Same, you know. <laughs> so yeah. So if, yeah. it's a cool story though when you when you want to know about how it was made, why it right? was made. I mean, it's pretty amazing. So. Yeah, it's, it's neat. It's neat. We These think so. We both groups, different, different. You know, yeah, we think it's, cool. it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're curious, you can look that up too. Mm. Uh, we are grateful to discuss Linux and open source with you. We believe there is a lot of creativity and future in Linux and open source software. We believe that Linux is a great option, and that regardless of whatever OS you use or prefer, that you're creating and making art and having fun. So mm-hmm. whether you dual boot or have a favorite OS or use multiple, that's okay. We're not. There's nothing wrong with any of that. So just keep making art and having fun. Mm-hmm. So we we hoped you know that 
learning about Linux either made you curious about it or, yeah, just, you, know, you know, just exploring something different. Something new, something different to yeah. look, look at, figure out. Yeah, even and if, if you've you never actually, heard it. Yeah, if you, ha if you are a Linux artist or you use Linux, hey, leave, you know, leave down in the comments something about it. You know, let us know. Let people know. Communicate. It's a great thing to do, you know. Linux is something to really talk about because, yeah, like we said, there's a, there's a big future in this. Definitely. Yeah. It's kind of interesting how, you know, the landscape is changing in the world of computers. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. So, so we hope this video helps you out. Let us know what you think in the comments and feel free to like and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Most charmly out. Most yeah. charmly out. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs>